Hey there YouTube, it's JP Dunphy, your BMW genius here at BMW Fort Washington. In today's video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be going over the i4 from a Tesla owner's perspective. That Tesla owner being me. With that, let's jump in. So for starters, for starters, inside, uh, this is my Tesla, my personal Tesla. It's a 2019 Standard Range Plus, so the rear wheel drive. Um, and as you can see, I do have a yoke steering wheel on my personal one. Good lord, that is very loud. Let's just uh, turn that. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Um, it is very loud. I do not use uh, Tesla's premium connectivity because it's, you know, a little over $10 a month. And I'm like, you know what? I'm sure I could put my money better somewhere else. So I ended up getting this little guy here. It is a wireless charger and it basically holds my phone so I can have Apple Maps and have a some form of a heads well it's not even a head-up display it's more of just a extra screen that'll integrate apple maps um in terms of the way everything works in here it's everything you'd expect if you've ever been inside a tesla it's just one giant screen here all of your main driving information comes over here so when i hit my little guy here and put her in drive it shows everything you need to know over here I do have the uh, full self-driving in this, which is, you know, entertaining, but I really don't use it that much, being completely straightforward about it. Um, another thing that bothers the living hell out of me about this, uh, it does have two wireless chargers down here, and of course I have this one up here. Uh, you know, nice deep stuff down here. Yes, that was my other BMW slash Mini. And of course a game controller. Why? Because this thing does have games. So going over some of the benefits of uh, Tesla in the first place, starting off is, you know, things like arcade. You actually have arcade games. If you have not seen that before, you also have uh, Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, YouTube, TikTok. What they don't tell you is that you only really get those if you're connected to Wi-Fi or if you have the connectivity thing. I do not. So therefore, I do not have access to these. Uh, unless I use my phone as a hotspot, and even that is kind of spotty at best. Toolbox does have a couple of gimmicky things in here that are some fun, some random, like the romance thing, music, and of course the ever infamous fart machine. Or sorry, emissions testing mode. Uh, there's a light show thing that they re released in uh, for the holiday update for this past year, and this is uh, version 11 of the software. I do have the full... Da -da 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 -da. I do have a full self-driving. I'm not part of the beta, so I don't have the uh, version 10, 11. I actually can't remember which, which it is. But, um, yeah. So, everything on this is up to date with the current releases and all that. And, again, yoke steering wheel. And with that, let's uh, take a little peek. Oh, by the way, white interior. If you ever have the option and you have kids, which <laughs> I do, I have two, don't get the white interior. Also, gigantic glass roof, if you've never seen that before. Um, auto dimming, rear mirrors and side mirror over here, as well as the side mirror over there. That's one thing that BMW does not do with theirs, but again, that's just sort of showing you what this one does. So with that, let's dive into the uh, BMW i4. So I know what some of you are thinking. You work at BMW. Why on earth do you drive a Tesla? I think that seems kind of foolish. And in some ways, yes it is. But, um, there is a story behind it. Long story short is I was driving a Mini Cooper SE, as you can see in some of the past videos when I was showing uh, BHAV and BEV uh, charging options when I was at my house. Uh, but, bottom line, two boys need extra space, need four doors, because uh, babies have a lot of stuff that you need to carry with you, and a Mini was not cutting it for that. Or at least the, you know, all-electric Mini. Of course, they're changing that coming out soon, so who knows, maybe that's... Uh, next car in my future outside from my i4 m50 so one of the reasons that i specifically got an i4 m50 on order and i'm replacing the tesla is because certain things are just a little more important to me personally um now objectively the tesla does have a better charging network as in you don't need to have several different apps to use it uh they give you a, an adapter that allows you to simply take a j1772 plug plug that into your tesla and you can use any of the level two chargers out in public at home any of that stuff i use it at my house it works just fine and of course you have tesla's supercharging network 
Now, the main difference between Tesla supercharging and network and our network are we do have significantly more DC fast chargers and a larger network that BMW uses. Now, it's not as reliable overall, uh, just because obviously it's still a growing network. They're just starting from scratch. There are a bunch of different people working together. So getting everything to work together has had its challenges, but of course it's always getting better. The infrastructure is growing at exponential rates. And that's something that's going to make it significantly more competitive with a Tesla's own supercharging system. One other benefit that Tesla has over uh, other companies right now is the fact that when you go to one of their superchargers, you simply take the little guy out plug it in and you're done you don't have, there's no app there's nothing to worry about it it gets charged to your tesla automatically because it's all in the same network and that's one benefit of of course having that setup now do i think it's worth that i don't do many road trips so obviously this is where the personal thing comes in comes into play if you are going to do a whole bunch of road trips if you are constantly on the road quite honestly probably on any ev is probably not going to be for you uh, now, I do have one relatively long trip that I do every summer and uh, occasionally in the winter where I basically go from my current house down to South Jersey where my shore house is. So that's about 100 miles altogether, which isn't horrible. It's perfectly fine. And I was able to do that in my Mini Cooper SE. So I'm not too worried about that. Range is not a thing for me. Uh, what I do care about and something that has been bugging me personally is uh, one thing I did as of two days ago, I actually did a side by side one day after the other because temperatures, humidity, all that was basically equivalent between the two days. And I was like, okay, one night I'm going to have my Tesla just like normal. I'm going to do the exact same test the next day with the i4. So with that, what I did was I actually took them home and I drove them the same way I always do. Drove them home, left them overnight, had them preconditioned in the morning with all this without being plugged in and then drove them back to work. So it's 28 miles altogether, 14 miles each way, and preconditioning and temperatures overnight, which again, were within two degrees of each other between the two nights that I did this. What I ended up finding was the Tesla can only be charged to, I always left, I left here with 90%, I left here at work from 90%, go home, come back, and I'm at 62%. So just about 30% of my battery is gone. That's a lot. In the, the exact same circumstance in the i4, not a full charge, but an 87% charge, I drove that home. Uh, so that was 87% when I left the dealership, got home overnight, didn't plug in, preconditioned, and came back to the dealership uh, before plugging back in. Total percentage lost, 7%. 7%. Also... One thing that personally seems to work better for me, at least, let me get this car started and I'll show you what I mean. I'm sure as many of you know, you know, I've already done a bunch of videos about iDrive 8, the whole curved display, uh, the fact that there's an actual head up display, which I personally love. I'm a big fan of head up displays. I like to have all my information, just a small glance down instead of, uh, 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 uh. or in the Tesla, that's and, and, and yeah. So, I mean, one major difference that you'll obviously know is if you aren't aware, the uh, i4 does share its platform with the 4 Series Grand Coupe, meaning that it doesn't have a flat floor in the back. There is the hump in the back, and yeah. Uh, another thing it has is because it has Service Pack 18, that basically makes it so I just have the digital key, not the digital key plus. That's only available in the iX. Now, one benefit of the Tesla is with your phone as a key, you can simply have your phone in your pocket, walk up to the door, unlock it, get in, put your phone on the pedal, and drive. With the i4, you can't do that with your phone as a key. You do have to touch it to the door handle and then put it on your little pad right there, whether that's charging or just an NFC pad, and then you can drive off. So that's one downside of an i4 over that. Now, when it comes down to it completely, is that really a game changer for me? Not really, all right? I mean, because one thing I have found is that the the key, the phone key for the Tesla, I'm not sure if this is better on newer Teslas, but at least on my 2019, 
it's not as reliable. So the one thing I do know is whenever I come up to this car and put my key on the and put my key out the door, it opens. If I have it set to, you know, do the comfort access with the normal key fob, it works. It does not give me any issues. I can have it set to automatically walk away, same as the Tesla and all that. But what I personally like the most, one thing that BMW definitely does better than Tesla, in my personal opinion, I found this with the Mini and I found it even after leaving the Mini, <laughs> and especially on this i4, they tune their throttle wonderfully. It is a fantastic way that they've just kind of manipulated that throttle to give you exactly the amount of power you expect depending on how much you put your foot down. I think that is very rare and usually it's you know pretty instant acceleration whatever you can actually modulate in the i4 significantly better one other thing that they do specifically better than uh the tesla is even though the tesla is great aerodynamic wheels and all that it technically has a better drag coefficient than the i4 however when it comes to actual efficiency as told by my earlier story the i4 does a better job at managing its its distance and actually gives a pretty darn accurate uh, expected distance. Now, for instance, in my in my my car, not so much. It's, it's like I said, you know, 30% to go 28 miles. Uh, and then the car itself is telling me I went, you know, 64 miles. I'm like, that's, that's, that's not right. That's, that's, that's not good. <laughs> um, and of course, another thing that of course is a massive thing for me, I love Apple CarPlay, all right? I've grown up without, I basically grew up without for the longest time. I fed my FRS, which I had from 2012 all the way to uh, 2019. I mean, I had that car for a long time, uh, but I had my FRS. I put in a head unit that allowed me to have Apple CarPlay. Uh, my Mini Cooper had CarPlay. Both my Minis had CarPlay. Uh, my earlier Mini, like my first ever Mini did not have it, but that was also an R56, so we're not going to talk about that. Uh, but again, just the basic integration of the car here makes it so much better uh, and at least helpful for me. Again, if you haven't seen any of the other stuff that we have here, when I tell it to uh, go home, it not only gives me the Apple CarPlay here, but it also gives me my Apple Maps right here in the display, as well as my turn by turn up there in my head up display. All that means it is significantly easier to use than the Tesla setup. Because again, if you don't pay for that extra, uh, the extra premium connection, that's $10 a month, you don't get things like traffic updates or any, any like the really helpful stuff on onboard navigation. Tesla, Tesla doesn't do that, whereas BMW offers you four years of, uh, connected, of connected drive connections for uh, the onboard navigation, and of course, Apple CarPlay if you don't want to use the onboard navigation. One of the benefits that you can do that you find between both cars is it, when you use the onboard navigation and you go to a fast charger, it will precondition the battery to give you the fastest possible charge. So that is, of course, extremely helpful. Obviously, you want to minimize your time at the, at the charger and you want to maximize your time on the road. So all of that is helpful in both cars. I'd, ar I'd argue uh, that both those are pretty darn even. I've done preconditioning for both as well as DC fast charging for both. Tesla supercharger for that one. And for this one, the only one I could find closest to me was a 50 watt. So not as fast, but still very impressive. Um, yeah. Uh, another thing that I could definitely found when in my drive that I did myself is there's something about having just the most simplest controls right here at, at your fingertips. You know, if I want to change my display, I can do that. There is no change in the display in the Tesla. It's just, it, your display is your display. Here, I can obviously change the layout. I think that is super fun and very important for me personally. I have different moods, therefore I want to be, you know, satisfied different things. Another thing that makes this extremely helpful and straightforward for me is when I want to change my mode, they're right here. There's, there's no finicking. I just simply press sport. Now I'm in sport mode. You know, I want to go back to comfort and it's in comfort mode. I want to be more economic minded. I can go to eco pro and it's there. There are ch different ways you can change it in the note in the Tesla, but you have to go through menus and it's not just a simple touch of a button. There are also no, except for the two on the steering wheel there and there, there are no buttons in the Tesla. Uh, one thing I do think Tesla is slightly better at is it's recognition of voice. Like if you tell it to 
part of my French, warm my butthole, it will do so. If you tell this one, you know, warm my butthole, it might get it, it might not. Uh, however, significantly, actually I shouldn't even say significantly, everything that you can do in BMW's personal assistant is almost, almost, I actually, uh, I'm trying to say this is the worst one. Um, this is actually the be better one and everything that I can do. Tesla is most of the way there. If you, if I tell that, if I tell Tesla to use, for instance, call my mother, it doesn't know what I'm talking about. If I tell BMW, you can save that. You can save your relations in the, uh, in the car itself. Or of course you can just press and hold for three seconds and get Apple CarPlay and tell it to, ah, one day I'll remember not to do that, but today is not that day. Uh, but bottom line is you can just use your phone, easier integration. And again, that is, that is super big for me. That's big for my wife. And of course my wife being able to change it. Uh, you do have different profiles in here, same as you would in the Tesla. Uh, that's not different. I personally like the steering wheel in this one better than Tesla's stock steering wheel. Again, I haven't, I have a different one, uh, the yoke steering wheel in mine. So that's that having a heat steering wheel. Very nice. Very helpful. Um, even though they do do the minimalistic thing over there, there is a thing that kind of happens. Let me turn this around real fast. So there's a thing that happens, uh, especially when people think of luxury. If you asked about luxury about 30 years ago, it'd be how much stuff do you have? How much, how many things are in there? How much, how much, um, you know, trinkets do you have in your home that look expensive, feel expensive, all that. Sounds right in my eyes. Oh, by the way, another benefit, you can actually close it. <laughs> but, um, lots of things. Tesla has obviously taken the modern version of good, good feeling, right? So minimalist, it's fewer things in there, less things to get distracted. It's also built from the ground up to be an EV, whereas this is a shared platform. So all that kind of factors into all of that. However, I personally don't think that I need an entire, you know, spread of where air can come out of. I'm perfectly fine just simply adjusting these and making it work for me. Maybe some people don't like that. Of course, this is a personal decision, but for me, it's not necessary. And I personally just like more of the information I get from BMW itself. Uh, and of course, I mean, you start driving for this next little part, but for me, another thing that is a massive plus for BMW is its sound. I know you, most people think, you know, you got an electric car, you really don't care about sound, but I'm going to go about over three more points on the road. Sorry, again, this is a longer video because it's kind of, I'm going into a little more depth and uh, personal perspective on this. So, um, another thing I want to put out there is this is not the perspective of BMW themselves. This is not the perspective of the uh, dealership itself. This is my personal perspective as a Tesla owner towards the i4 and then what I personally am looking for. So, you know, if anyone has other opinions, all that, please leave those in the comments. I love having that kind of discussion in the comments and you know, let's go over that. But for the next part, let's hit the road. So now that we're moving along again, I can definitely say that I personally really prefer having the sound. If you haven't heard of that iconic sound before, you know, you'll get a little bit of that in this video. That's not the main point of my doing this, but I'm up on the highway here just to prove one thing for me personally. So a uh, major thing that you have with BMW is an actual adaptive suspension. Now, whether or not you get the M suspension, that's kind of up to you. I personally think that is a fantastic um, way to spend money on a little extra thing if you get the i4 um, E-Drive 40, or if you have just the standard uh, M50 like you have here. Oh, look, another Tesla coming up here. Hello. Um, but one thing that definitely does better is because Tesla does not have adaptive suspension on the Model 3, which is the direct competitor to this by most people's standards. Um, another thing you obviously get with the Model 3, uh, when you start paying more money, you're looking at um, you know three different models with the Tesla as opposed to just two models for the i4. Now, one thing that is definitely more helpful there is the battery is the same with i4, whether you get the E-Drive 40 or the M50. Both of them have that 80, 84 kilowatt hour battery with 81 kilowatts basically allotted to you.
for use. Now, a thing that I find, especially with the i4 over the Tesla Model 3, is its ability to actually put the power down and not cut that power when you're trying to do something in a corner. It allows you to actually have some tail out action, whereas Tesla, because they are you know, on the safer side with the way they tune their stuff, they don't offer outside of their performance model. You can't just turn off traction control, whereas in the i4, you have it here, no matter what. Um, another thing I find, uh, by the way, while we're talking about this, is its parking assistant. This particular one does have the parking assistant, and I can say the parking assistant in BMW is 10,000 times more reliable than the Tesla. All right, so that's a, that's a major gripe I have with the Tesla, at least with my wife parking, because <laughs> she keeps saying, no, I drive past it and it never picks up the spot. But BMW does do it. If you are if you're using the thing properly, if you have not seen it, by the way, go ahead and find this little guy in the corner here, and it'll take you to the how to use BMW's parking assistant. Uh, and I have that uh, review for the i8 as, or sorry, the iX as well, and I will have a link to that in the description as well. So, a major point for me again is see, I wanted to kick out that tail for a quick second, and it let me. I love that. I love being able to have fun in the car. Tesla does kind of reel you in a little bit more. Now, is it great in uh, straight line acceleration? Of course it is, but I mean, most cars kind of should be at this point. It's 2022. You know, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that if you hopped into, you know, a Toyota Corolla with its CVT, but it has an actual first gear, that's still going to feel okay off the line. I mean, it's not going to, you know, make your face melt or anything, but it's going to get the job done. So, going back to that, again, as I mentioned earlier, the, the ability to modulate throttle in the i4 is so much more precise than in the Model 3, at least from my personal perspective. Its ability to actually be comfortable on the highway is so much better. And again, one touch away from different settings and more comfortable ride if you want that, if you have friends in the car, if you have family in the car. The point is, it's multiple personalities in one. Now again, if you don't know, you actually in normal comfort mode don't get access to the full power when you're using the i4 M50. So when I put my foot down right now and do this, it's, you know, putting down the power, it's very impressive. It's 469 horsepower at that point. But I don't know who that is. Goodbye. Um, it is, 469 horsepower. It's not the 537 pound or 536 horsepower uh, that is mentioned. That is only found in sport boost mode. Get this guy in front of us. Here we go. But even with that, it's still extremely effective. There's a now, even though any electric car, for the most part, you're going to have slightly numb steering because it's usually well electric <laughs> steering. So because of that, there is always going to be that little hampering of the steering itself. However, I can tell you that in terms of even though this is the all-wheel drive version and I drive the rear-wheel drive Tesla, there is a certain level of just better sense of what the tires are doing. It's a better feeling car to me. And it's not numb speed. It's you know, effective speed. It's let you know what's happening. Also, number one thing about this guy is when I put my backup camera in the center, it is actually in the center as well as giving me that, you know, three top down view, 360 degree camera when I want it. I don't get that in the Tesla. One thing that actually personally drives me up a wall is so like this guy, I'm currently slightly off center, right? Slightly off center from the back. If I look to the back here, through the back, it is slightly off center. In the Tesla, for some reason, like the backup lines are so far off that my wife has almost twice uh, scraped the back of the bumper because she thought it was somewhere that it wasn't. I personally do not like that. That that drives me nuts. I feel like if it, there's if there are lines. It should show you exactly where the car is going to go. If you can't figure that out, you shouldn't put the lines in the first place. But, um, yeah. Also, there's a recall on the 
on the harness for that. So I'm not sure if that'll somehow be fixed if the, after that recall gets done, but that's neither here nor there. With that, I do want to show one other thing that's kind of interesting between these two cars. Uh, aside from, you know, the things I've mentioned so far, uh, maintenance wise it is something that's worth noting. Tesla's corrosion is only four years, uh, four years, whereas BMW offers 12 years altogether. Um, our entire way of doing the maintenance program is just a little more extensive than would otherwise be found in Tesla. Um, but with that, I do want to take to the, take us to the back here real quick. All right then, so back of the Tesla. So obviously it sort of looks like it's a hatchback. It's not, it is a standard trunk. It's a nice wide opening. It gets the job done. Uh, it also has, of course, the nice big storage box under here. I can't really get to that because of this stroller, but you know, I have stuff under there. It's good. It's helpful. It gets the job done. Oh my, oh. Pardon me. There we go. That's better. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it does have some good depth and you know, it's a, it's a pretty nice wide opening. It like, it's very wide. It is wide. Uh, something that is not here. I did have to go aftermarket for automatic lift, uh, for the tailgate as well as the frunk. Oh, and if you don't know, obviously there's a frunk too. Um, there is no frunk in the I-4. Personally, as cool as a frunk is, and it's fun to just say frunk, 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 I don't have any use for a frunk. I don't really use my frunk now. I'm not going to use it later. But, the NW, automatic lift. It is a nice, wide hatchback. It gives you lots of room. Like, I mean, lots and lots and lots of room. It's a slightly bigger trunk, although it is a little bit less wide, but it's deeper. Uh, another thing that's especially helpful for this, Tesla has a 60-40 setup. BMW uses a 40-20-40. So a little more versatility, a little bit easier to use. You know, when you have things like kid child seats, like I do, that's gonna last a little longer, <laughs> a little bit easier to use. Um, and then of course, I don't have the uh, key with me. I use my phone as the key, but it does have kick to, kick to open, kick to close. That does not exist on that car. Uh, I can also lock the car from here as well as just simply close it. Now, all that being said, obviously it's not all about that. Something you will find is that the rear opening and roof line for that is about the same as on the Tesla. Um, it's a slightly bigger door on the Tesla, so it's a wider opening, so it's a little bit easier to get things like child seats in the back versus in the i4. However, the i4 does have a nice big opening. It's, it's extremely helpful. It's usable. I can comfortably sit behind myself and I have about eh, maybe three and a half inches of knee room. Uh, I'm 5'11", so I, you know, I'm not the shortest guy in the world, but I'm also not the tallest. Uh, but I can very comfortably sit behind myself. There's room underneath the, underneath the seats. And again, there is still this center one because it's safe. My personal favorite. Yay. We have that. Cup holders. Boop. And again, most importantly for me personally, because I do like to do some outdoor stuff, uh, center pass through. So, you know, if I want to put my ski poles here, I can do that. I cannot do it in the Tesla if I have both child seats. Uh, adjustable headrests, the Tesla does not have those at all. But, you know, these little guys, simple press, they fold down, giving you better visibility out the back. One thing that is sort of a hamper on the i4 in comparison to the Tesla is because it is a shared platform and it doesn't have a full glass roof, that means that the back opening is a little bit smaller. Okay, let, let's, let's, let's not hamper that. It's, it's a lot smaller. <laughs> it's a lot smaller in comparison. Um, but yeah, again... Being in the back here, I mean, they're both basically the coupe, the coupe styling, the grand coupe styling, you know, frameless windows, all of that. The base system in this car, I think, sounds very, very good. This one is the base system. It's not the Harman Kardon. In that car, you have one system. It is the, it is the top end system, but it's one system. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I, for me, I, again, I, I'm trying... The problem is I, I don't want to talk about this too much and sound like I'm biased because it's, this isn't coming from a, a bias standpoint. You know, I get the car that works for me and thing that I look for, which is why I'm trying to 
show not only just a not as a BMW spokesman's point of view, but just as a I mean, you know, this will be by telling me my fourth electrified vehicle when it gets here. And I just want to show that, you know, there's there's a lot of choices out there, but there's really something to be said about the fit and finish of a BMW compared to a Tesla. And I mean we have gone a little bit less on the inside, you know, more touchscreen things to make it simpler and all that. And I personally, I personally like that. For me, again, the heads up display is the number one thing that makes it woo woo. And having an actual display in front of you with pertinent information that matters to me. Um, the wireless charging is only for one phone when you get it, and it's optional. It does have uh, fast charging in here, but. Again, you you look at the seats. I mean, there's there's so much going on in these seats, and these are the Sensatec seats, so they're not even the leather seats. But I mean, you look at this, and now compare it, you know, side by side with the Tesla seat. I mean, it's this is ripping. It's it's barely three years old barely three years old. It's 35,000 miles on this thing. I mean, it's sort of falling apart. There's also this weird thing where you see you have a soft touch here and a harder touch here, but they don't even match. They, you can see they're different things. This stuff is really like this is, these little tiny scratches are from my dog. And not my dog scratching it, just my dog brushing up against it with his collar. So, I mean, there's, there's that. It's, it's, it's a lot of different materials that at first glance, they they work. I mean, this has piano black stuff underneath this. I did wrap this, and like even these guys. I mean, like I, I know cup holder is not like the number one thing for some people, but for me, it's it's something that you know I personally use on all basis. Whereas the i force cup holder, as simple as it is, is adjustable. Like it, you could fit things in there, and it's going to hold it. I had to get that insert because I can't hold certain cups in there unless I have it. You know, that's that's kind of exacerbating for me. Yeah, because I like my morning coffee. I am slightly addicted to caffeine, so, you know, that stuff matters. But with all that, the main things that matter the most for me, because I like to listen to music, I like to listen to podcasts when I'm in the car, the main things that are in here that do it for me is there's an actual volume knob right here. There is an actual... Um, steering wheel knobs right here. I have more adjustability with my main display here. I could make it whatever I want to be. Cruise control. It's super and simple and straightforward. Here it is. Ta-da. It's not boom, boom, and then adjust with the thing which may or may not work. Um, that's another thing. Sorry, I, I keep going off on these other tangents because this is kind of off the wing. I didn't know this is scripted in case that's not blatantly obvious, but there's a there's something to be said when you are sitting here driving around and you have your adaptive cruise control on and the car is constantly accelerating de accelerating decelerating like bmw's ability when you have the driver's this professional package to actually just keep a good distance and do it well it just seems to be leagues better than what's in that it's i just the, cust the customizability of this uh, is just better for me personally. And that's one of the main reasons why I'm making the change myself. You know, the build quality, it, this all works together. I mean, this material feels the same as this material. Yes, it's a different color because that's what's chosen in here. But everything feels nice. There's, there's no creaks. There's no rattles. It's, when you close it, it's, it's nice. It's fit. It's does its job the steering wheel is nice it's heated standard you know there's actual buttons to go to your presets preset options like i personally like to have a, a lounge option when i'm when i'm charging and then my driving option that's just how i like it you know that's you don't have adjustable versions you just simply have your version your one thing that goes to you when you sign in this one does the same thing you have your sign in it goes to number one but if i want number two it's there it's easy it's quick it's easy it's simple um, actual lock buttons, you know, you, you lock and unlock the car from here, from there, 
there are actual hard buttons to make it easier. I mean, I know these sound like sort of petty things, but it makes a difference to your daily use of the car. If you are new, to, if you are completely new to electric vehicles, this is going to be a much more familiar place to be than making the dive off the deep end into a full EV. But even when you go to, say, the iX, in, in turn, if you're going for a bigger car, the iX has just, it's, it's such a better built vehicle. It's its not even comparable, in my personal opinion. It's, it's, you have the things that you need easily accessible to you when you need them. I mean, you can make your little hotkeys here be whatever it is you want. Like. It's just so good. It's just so good. Let me actually turn this on and give you two seconds. There we go. That's better. Although one thing that is slightly, ever so slightly annoying. So because I do have my profile set up in the iX as well, it does save certain things from the iX that are not, not usable here. It's like if I use the sport button here, it's not going to work. Why? Because there's an actual button for sports. In the iX, it's a my mode and then a touch. That's why I can make that into that for this, the self timer for internal camera. There is no internal camera in here. I mean, there is an internal camera inside the Tesla, but you don't have access to it. So what's the point of that? Um, another thing that I do think that Tesla does better, although BMW is not far behind, it's kind of because of what they have on the inside, is their app. You can do more with the app for Tesla, but the main difference there is kind of straightforward, right? So Tesla is kind of primarily a software company that also builds cars. They have, you know, two cars. They have really two cars for the most part, and then they kind of expand that to four. They have four cars. The rest of the cars that they're making are not actually available yet. The Cybertruck is not here yet. The Roadster is not here yet. Those have been pushed back, what, two years at this point? Um, and you know, people aren't going to be driving a Tesla Semi as their daily driver. It's not going to happen. So, I mean, there are lots of little things that just make this car better, considering that BMW is going to have significantly more electrified models in the near future. And more importantly, it's just, it's an easier to maintain battery. You know, if something goes wrong with one of the batteries in this one, you simply drop the battery down, pop the top, say, oh, look, it's module 14. Pull out that, look, pull out that, excuse me, pull out that battery, replace it, and you're good to go. Tesla, even, even from, from what I understand, even with their uh, 4680 battery that's coming out, it's going to be multiple panels, so you'll need to replace multiple bits together if one fails. It seems, seems ridiculous to me. You know, you can either spend... I think it's something like $7,000 if you do half the battery pack, $14,000 for the full battery pack, versus maybe $1,500 for one of the modules that's going bad. And another thing that's nice about a modular battery pack is, in the future, if they start to uh, make the same modular design for, say, style state batteries, you could technically, in theory, plug in um, you know multiple different battery types in here and have the benefits of all of them. You can have an iron phosphate battery and as like a quarter of the battery pack, you can have um, solid state as another 25% and then lithium ion as the remaining 50%. Like that's, the options are there. The ability to scale bigger or smaller is there. And it's just a matter of great, drop it, put in a new one, as opposed to standardizing it in such a way that when one battery goes, one of your AA batteries goes wrong, it wipes out half the pack. Again, that just seems silly to me. It seems silly. Um, another thing that I personally find extremely helpful in the i4 compared to the uh, compared to the uh, Tesla is its ability to actually change what you want for regen. Now you do have the ability to change regen, but again, it's hidden in a bunch of options, right? But as long as you have the front-facing camera in the i4 or it's standard in the iX, you actually have something called adaptive regen, which means that you can it bases its regen on what it sees in front of it. Is there a big twisty road? It's going to give you more regen because you're going to need to brake going into each of those and get more power to come out. If you have a car in front of you, it's going to increase its regen so that way you can 
maximize your range, uh, you know, but keep a good distance. If there's no one in front of you, it lets you freewheel, minimize how much regen there is to get better range out of that instead of slowing down, speeding up, slowing down, speeding up, slowing down, speeding up, which in general nets more of a loss of energy, not a gain, even with maximum regen. So if you ask me for the driver, it, I mean, there are lots of bells and whistles in the Tesla, and I, I personally loved it. That was one of the things that I loved about it when I first transferred to the Tesla from the Mini SE. I was like, hey, there's lots of little things in here. It's kind of nice. But the more that I drove it, the less I used the gimmicks. And it became more about what what's the drive like? What is the drive of the car? So the drive of the car is what was the main thing for me. The i4 is a driver's car and it does the commute. It does everything you want and it has multiple personalities built into it from the start. When it tells you you have 237 miles left, you have 237 miles left. It changes that based on your driving habits. The Tesla is not as reliable with that, at least in my experience in the last few months I've had it. It's not as reliable in its expected range. So all that basically comes down to for me personally, the i4 is the better car. It just is. I prefer an actual driver's car. The i4 is that. You know, the, the, the saying that BMW is the ultimate drive machine is not just a motto. It's actually proof in the way that they do their cars and the way they put them together. This is a driving machine. This is the car that you want to take on the back road. This is the car that will do what you need when you need it. As much as I do love the Tesla and for everything Tesla's done, because this, again, this is not to knock anything that Tesla has done. Tesla has done an amazing thing, standardizing people's view of electric cars. And they've done it in a very short amount of time. I applaud Tesla for that. And I am happy to own one of their cars for that reason. But for me personally, it opens the door, but is not the king of what a car means to me. I love to get in and enjoy the drive. I don't want the car to drive for me. I mean, the, this car can have, you know, adaptive cruise all you want. So can that. That has full self-driving. I want to drive the car. That matters to me. If you want the car to, if you want to be a more of a passenger and less of an active participant in your drive, sure, go for a Tesla. Go for the that uh, the Chevy Super or is it Chevy GMC? I can't remember who makes Super Cruise, but go for one of those. But the bottom line, if you talk about full package compared to literally any other. BMW's competitors or any other vehicle manufacturer right now making the electric vehicle for what this car is supposed to be I don't think anyone else on the market is even close to matching the full package like the i4 which is why I'm trading that in for one of these anyway that's today's video um again sorry it is a little haphazard I just sort of threw it all out there uh, if you do have any questions or you want to hear even more about this, I can do a live session for people if they want on YouTube. Uh, but again, that's sort of what this entire video is supposed to be about. It's just sort of my, un I because I, I, I don't want to say I'm biased. I do own other cars than BMWs and Minis. I've owned lots of other cars. My press favorite was my Honda Civic Type R, but I don't own that anymore because it didn't fit what I needed. So for me personally, this is an amazing car. I think it's gonna last a long time. And I think this is gonna be more future-proof than most other cars at this point. I trust BMW with the cars that I buy because they've proven over and over, whether it's BMW or many of their sub-brand, that they show a willingness to let the driver be the driver. Yes, there's plenty of technology. I mean, the, the, the suites of beauty and simplicity that are in iDrive 8 in this car 
and in the IX, it, it, there it's great. It's a it's a beautiful symphony of kind of a combination of what you expect to see in a BMW and some of the newer tech. But nothing, nothing on the road, in my personal opinion, beats the ultimate driving machine. Life's too, life's too boring. Or sorry, that's a horrible way to put it. Life's too long. Nope, no, that's not it. Life's too short to drive a boring car. Let's drive a BMW. Get something that's gonna everyday it. Like for instance, Lamborghini owners. A lot of them, their daily driver is an M5. In every manufacturer that's out there, every car enthusiast should at least at one point own a BMW. A true BMW, not, not not, you know, the full entry levels, like, you know, oh, I just kind of want to dip my toe in the pool. No, like a real BMW, an M car. This is an M car. And it shows. I love this car. And that's why I'm getting one. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. I know there's a little <laughs> transition at the end right there, but... If you found this video helpful, like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you want to see more videos like this where I kind of do my own takes on the cars, please let me know, and uh, I will do so. With that, thanks for being with us, and uh, yeah, let us know what you want to see. Have a good one.